Hypersonic missile seems to be taking over the weapons sector of the major superpowers. As per reports suggest, China and Russia have already successfully tested their own versions of hypersonic missiles, while U.S. seems to be lagging behind. It is no secret that U.S. is no stranger to secrecy when it comes to revealing their weapons technology, but when it comes to hypersonic missile technology, the U.S. side has constantly revealed that they are behind in the race. We're behind in hypersonics. We failed to deter Russia. Last year, China so what do you, what do you, what do you mean we're behind in hypersonics? That, too, seems to be changing as Pentagon revealed that they have conducted a successful test launch of a rocket recently with more on the way. While U.S. seems to play catch up, China has seemingly already dived ahead in the race, while Russia is keeping busy in its conflict, but the question still remains. How far behind is U.S. when compared to China? In today's episode, we are going to talk about how China won the hypersonic missile war against the U.S. This is Race to Space, and if you like watching content like this, consider subscribing. The major superpowers of the world are always trying to one-up each other in every sector of technology. Whether it's new technology, space race, or weaponry, there is currently no dominant side as seen in the past. Hypersonic is one of those races where every nation is trying to get hold and control of the technology, while others aren't that far behind. The threat of hypersonic missiles is massive. During the conflict, defenses play a huge role. A proper counter to one side's offense is easier to push it back down and take over. But how do you play defensive against something that you cannot even see? That is what hypersonic is all about. A missile that travels so fast, modern defenses can't keep track of it until it is too late. Even today, reports suggest that there are no proper defenses against a hypersonic strike. Now, if the hypersonic missile carries a nuclear warhead on top of it, that is just game over. These new systems pose an important challenge due to their maneuverability all along their trajectory. Because their flight paths can change as they travel, these missiles must be tracked throughout their flight. A second important challenge stems from the fact that they operate in a different region of the atmosphere from other existing threats. The new hypersonic weapons fly much higher than slower subsonic missiles, but much lower than intercontinental ballistic missiles. The US and its allies do not have good tracking coverage for this in-between region nor does Russia or China. The primary reason nations are developing these next-generation hypersonic weapons is how difficult they are to defend against due to their speed, maneuverability, and flight path. The U.S. is starting to develop a layered approach to defending against hypersonic weapons that includes a constellation of sensors in space and close cooperation with key allies. This approach is likely to be very expensive and take many years to implement. With all of this activity on hypersonic weapons and defending against them, it is important to assess the threat they pose to national security. Hypersonic missiles with conventional, non-nuclear warheads are primarily useful against high-value targets such as an aircraft carrier. Being able to take out such a target could have a significant impact on the outcome of a major conflict. In the past, Russia claimed that their hypersonic technology is able to carry a nuclear warhead. While China has made no such comments, it is pretty likely that their technology would also be able to do such thing. Building a hypersonic missile is a whole other debate as well. To build a hypersonic missile, scientists need to solve advanced physics problems relating to missile flight, wind tunnel tests, and live launches, such as a highly publicized one that China took in 2021, are costly. Using commercial American software, the result of years and sometimes decades of research and development minimizes the time and resources needed for such tests, according to Chinese scientists in an interview to The Washington Post. The American products also have applications in commercial aerospace, as well as in other fields where China and the United States compete, including aircraft engine design. According to reports, Pentagon conducted a successful test launch of a rocket recently, which tested about a dozen hypersonic weapons experiments and has another test launch scheduled for the future which might carry same results. To speed the development, the Pentagon launched these experiments and prototypes using a sounding rocket, a smaller and therefore more affordable test vehicle, to fill a critical gap between ground testing and full system flight testing. This was the second test of the same program that is focused on developing both land-based and sea-based hypersonic missiles and capabilities. The first test of this program was conducted a year ago, in October 2021. 
According to Vice Admiral Johnny Wolf, the Director of Strategic Systems Programs who oversaw the test, the launch today went extremely well. As a matter of fact, we just gotten done looking through our key observables, and every piece of data that we wanted to collect, at least preliminarily, has shown that we collected all that data. The tests are an important stepping stone for the U.S. military to develop its own hypersonic weapons programs to try to catch up to China. The U.S. Army and Navy are both working to develop hypersonic weapons programs through the long-range hypersonic weapon and conventional prompt strike programs. The data collected from these tests will help in the development of the Navy's conventional prompt strike hypersonic system and the Army's long-range hypersonic weapon. The two programs will both use the common hypersonic glide body a projectile carried atop a booster rocket that coasts towards its target at speeds greater than Mach 5. Russia used its hypersonic technology in the Russian-Ukraine conflict, while China tested a successful hypersonic cruise vehicle in the past, which was a cause for concern for the U.S. That is when the Pentagon decided to make developing new hypersonic missile technology a top priority. While the first test counted as a complete success, the second test is on the waiting list. It aims to carry out an additional 13 experiments designed to inform hypersonic weapons development. As a country, we are behind China, and even Russia for that matter, and this is not a good situation. A whole new type of offensive capability, and we are behind, no doubt about it," said the U.S. Congressman Doug Lamborn. Right now, we don't have the ability to adequately cover the tracking and even the fire control when it comes to hypersonic vehicles. We need to have the sensor layers in space. He added, the US side has constantly mentioned China being ahead in the hypersonic missile technology, and rightfully so. The problem is that US still remains in testing phase. Russia, as mentioned before, has tested their equipment in the Russia-Ukraine conflict, but that's a whole different debate. China seems to currently ahead of the US. In a test in the past, a Chinese hypersonic cruise missile traveled all around the globe at insane speeds in low Earth orbit. The missile then maneuvered towards its target and landed about 20 miles away from its mark. This test caught the U.S. intelligence by surprise and raised several concerns causing the nation to speed up their testing process, which certainly was a good call as the recent tests were successful and the future testing aims to be as well. China already has the DF-17 in their arsenal and is already testing on other technology. According to state-owned media sources, China launched DF-17 missiles from a ground-based platform during live-fire exercises near Pington Island in the Taiwan Strait in early August. A few days before those exercises, Beijing demonstrated the hypersonic weapon system, which was last seen in a 2019 military parade, in a video celebrating the 95th anniversary of the founding of the People's Liberation Army. All in all, it's clear that China is ahead, while US remains in the testing phase and catching up, but that doesn't seem to be much far. With everything about how China won the hypersonic missile war against the US covered, it's time to wrap this one up. If you have any topics in mind, comment below, and we will cover them for you. As always, subscribe to never miss out. This is Race to Space, and we'll see you in the next one.